Hi everyone, I'm Jody, and welcome to my channel. I'm really glad that you're here today. And if you love to save money and learn from my product failures, then you'll be glad that you stopped by today too. We're gonna to talk all about the top, oh I don't know, there's probably 13, 14 products here that did not work for me. Now my skin in full transparency is 52 years old, it has sun damage, it has oily T-zone, and then dry in this area. So just because these products didn't work for me, yeah, some of them won't work. Regardless of your skin type, let's just be honest, some of them might work on different skin types, but some of them are just, just not good. Now, I take these types of videos very, very seriously because I don't wanna hurt a brand or a product, and I certainly don't wanna discourage you from purchasing them if you think they might work for you. So if you're ready to talk about products that just may not be worth your money, especially as we're coming up on certain big sales events with big beauty stores and makeup stores, these are products that you probably can just skip and spend your money on products that you know and you love. I have purchased all these products myself. Brands may not sponsor me after this video. I know some of you in the comments may say, oh, but I love that product and that is great. If you love these products, please share it in the comments that you love it and why you love it. And maybe even if you wouldn't mind what type of skin you have so that it can relate to other people so that people that are very similar in skin type or skin tone, this might be a product find for them. All right, so without further ado, if you are ready, let's just jump into it. All right, one of the first ones, and I know this one is gonna spark a lot of controversy, and this is the Bye Bye Under Eye by It Cosmetics. Now, some of these products, you guys, I have recommended upon first use or maybe even second use, but have you ever had a product that you've used a few times and by the third or fourth time you're like, why did I love this? Or you just fall out of love over a course of a couple times using it? That is how I feel about this one. This Bye Bye Under Eye by It Cosmetics is one of those concealers that seems to be a lot of people's favorite. It is super, super thick, and it is very, very pigmented. I mean, now you put that on top of an eye with any type of serum under it, and I get, not only do I get it to slip, but it settles into lines and, look, I can't even call them fine lines. They're, they're lines. It settles into lines so quickly that it is hard to do anything with it once it's done that. It's very tacky, it's very thick, and maybe if you've got a lot of discoloration under your eyes, you need this thick of a concealer. But even that, I would say use a color corrector first and then a lighter concealer, and you'd be better off than this really thick formula. So for me, It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye is a big pass and kind of a fail for mature eyes. Now I know it's a hot selling item on QVC and in some of the other beauty stores, but I just, I think this is the second time I bought it because the first time I bought it and I didn't use it and it dried out. So I thought, oh, some YouTuber recommended it again. So I thought, let me try it. It's gotta be a reason it looks so good on camera and it just doesn't, it just does not work for me. So fail number one. All right, let's stick with concealers because we have quite a few of them today. The next concealer is by Revlon and this is their photo ready. And I wanted to love this because I thought it was a good concealer for more mature skin. It also has very good pigment to it and it's creamy and it's smooth. I like how much pigment it has. What I found is that it just slipped right away and didn't last much past the rest of my makeup application. There's a lot of things to love about this Revlon Photo Ready. One is how easy it is to put on and the shape of the applicator. It's got a nice angle to it. It's very convenient with that tip to just go under your eyes and then press it in. So I liked a lot of things about it. What I didn't like is how long it lasted on my eyes. It just didn't seem to last much longer than the rest of my makeup application. And then I thought, well, did I forget my concealer today? And I didn't, I hadn't forgotten my concealer. It just, it was invisible. So that was a pass for me. If you don't need a lot of concealer and you can set it with the powder, this might still be a good option, but um, for my more mature eyes that needs a little bit of serum prior to a concealer without setting it with too much powder, that was just wasn't the formula for success in this application for me. Next up is by Dior, and this is the Dior Backstage, and this comes in at $29. It has a little tiny brush at the end of it. It's not a doe foot applicator. It's just a, a little, little tiny brush. What I didn't like about this is how thick it goes on. And again, it just looks cakey 
and doesn't really give you the long lasting coverage that you would expect in a concealer. Now you can see how nicely it does cover up that spot. However, it starts to look cakey throughout the morning. It doesn't even get me through four hours before it starts to wear thinner and settles into fine lines and wrinkles. So for me, that was a hard pass and an expensive lesson to learn. Now, if you love Dior products and you love Dior concealer, the one I would reach for is the Dior Forever Skin Correct. In fact, I've had this one so long, it's almost gone. The bottle and packaging is a little bit different now. This is a full coverage concealer. I really like this one because A, it has a nice doe foot applicator, but it also lasts a long time without settling, but it is a full coverage. So from that perspective, it wears well, it covers well, it doesn't settle and it doesn't wear thick. I want a concealer that's thick enough to cover, but not so thick that I spend a lot of time blending it into my foundation. And I want it to wear similarly to my foundation. Have you guys ever had those makeup days where halfway through the day you look in the mirror and either your foundation has worn much better than your concealer or vice versa and it just looks like you've had two very different products on? In essence, we do have two different products on between our concealer and our foundation, but I'm the only one that should know that. Anybody that sees me out and about should not know that those are two different products. I find that this one is much more easy to blend than this one into the rest of my foundation or, or any other products that I have around. And again, don't let this packaging fool you. That's how long I've had this one. The packaging is different now where the words are across the top of the packaging, but still a very, very good concealer. This one just did not really work for me. This one's a little more expensive as I'm realizing, but I did like it better. All right, let's stick with, uh, let's stick with Dior because why not? Why their marketing team's gonna cross me off of any PR list that I was potentially ever inching my way on. So now let's talk about the Dior Show 24 Hour Stylo Intense Waterproof Eyeliner. Now I highlighted this probably a year ago. Now what I liked about this at the time was that it was waterproof. It came in this very nice little, I think I even talked about how this is not a twist, it is a pull top and there's the product. Here's the issue I have with this, you guys. It is an intense black color. It is waterproof, so it wears a long time. The problem is this formula is so soft. It's a gel formula that you just twist from the bottom, so it doesn't ever really get pencil sharp, which, okay, I can work with that. If it starts to break or something, you still can twist it up and you can use the corner as an edge to get those nice lines. I don't love that. For $34, I would like my eyeliner to stay sharp at the tip and not have to wait for it to break off to then twist it up and use that corner as an edge. But we can live with that if the intensity and the waterproofness, waterproofness, and the color lasts throughout an eight hour, or in this case, 24 hours. None of that was the bigger issue for me. The bigger issue is how soft this gel formula is. You guys, it is one of those, just like on the lip liners, where you go to use it, and before you know it, you have broke that tip, and I'm not a hard presser. I am not a hard presser when it comes to eyeliner. I think I'm fast, I'd like it to be quick, but I don't press hard. So when I look and find that I have left a chunk of that eyeliner, out here in the wing and now I've got to figure out where it dropped in my lap or on the carpet even worse. That is just a frustration and again at $34 I would expect it to not be such a frail formula that it falls that easily because then you waste a lot of the product. I have probably wasted, I mean I don't even know how much is left. Okay, see that that's the problem I have with this. That's how much is left and I've used this probably less than 10 times. Like that is a problem for me for $34. So Dior, I love you. I love a lot of, I love your eyeshadows. I love a lot of things that you do. I do not love this and I'm sorry for it. So, all right, let's go on to, Charlotte Tilbury used to be a very good brand when it was more created by Charlotte herself. Since the company sold a few years ago, I have just found that the products are not as quality as they used to be. Let me know in the comments if you guys have found that too. I want to continue to love it because I want to continue to support her as a makeup artist, but the products have changed. It's a big conglomerate company that owns it now and it's just not the same. The product of hers that I think is just not worth the money anymore is this magic cream. There used to be a time when you could use this magic cream as your prep before your foundation or your tinted moisturizer or whatever product you were gonna put on your skin prior to your base. And this was magic. It made it look very plump, it made it look very moist, 
and you are ready for your foundation because we all know that that is a key to a good makeup look is a good plump moisturized hydrated skin prior to this used to do that for me a few issues that i have with it now is it, it has a scent which i don't think that's necessary so it's got a little bit of a fragrance which ah it's too close to my nose but in addition to that it interferes or interacts in a funny way with almost every foundation that I have tried. And you guys know me, I try a lot of different foundations, drugstore all the way up to Tom Ford and Clay de Poe. This interferes with them in a way that it makes my non-patchy foundations wear a little patchy and almost slip and settle into this area around my nose, any of these lines. I just find my makeup application looks worse after I'm done with it, after I've done everything, then better. And I, again, I don't know, I haven't looked at the ingredients enough to see what's all in here. I would just say if you are looking to purchase some new cosmetics, in most cases, if you use a good moisturizer, and it doesn't have to be an expensive moisturizer, that L'Oreal filler moisturizer with collagen that I use, it does the same thing in terms of moisturizing my skin and prepping my skin for my foundation. So this is an expensive cream that I think you can get in your normal moisturizing cream. So sorry, Charlotte, but that is just not a winner for me. Next up is Laura Mercier. Now, if you saw last week's Friday Face Off, I am gaining a lot of friends with this one, but they have recently released the Pure Canvas Primer. Now, when it comes to my primers, I like a thicker formula. I like the Tatcha Silk Canvas. I like the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, or is it Poreless Primer? Oh, I have it right here. Um, e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. That's a lot of peas going on. So I don't mind a thicker primer. This is a thicker primer. What I don't love about it is it almost turns to a powder consistency after you've spread it out or applied it. Now, if you have oily skin and you like to wear a primer, this might be one that you wanna try, but I find that it feels very powdery and it sort of balls up or gums up. Have you guys ever had that product where it just sort of rolls? That's what this one did to me multiple times. I've tried it on my dry patches. I've tried it in the oily area and I just could not get it to work right. So if, again, if you're gonna not wear any makeup and you have oily skin, this might be good, but I just don't know how it's gonna interact with oil on your skin either because again, it just feels very, like right now, it feels like a very fine powder on my skin. And then you put something on top of that, any type of a foundation, it just is gonna look very dry and cakey. And yeah, I mean, you can see it gumming up. I hope that picks up on camera, but you can see it just gumming up on my hands and I'm just not, I'm not a fan. I don't know how this is supposed to work. Yes, it blurs, yes, it's silicone free, but it just feels yucky on my skin. While we're talking about yucky, let's talk about this uh, YSL new tinted moisturizer. It's not new, it's been out for about a year. It sells itself to be a, very lightweight, your skin but better tinted moisturizer. Now, I was going to put this in the Friday face off because I've done two now on tinted moisturizers. I knew how it was gonna perform against at least the WTF by Jones Road because I have tried this a variety of ways and this is like wearing nothing on your skin, I think. Now, YSL, I love their all hours, which is why I was really excited about this when it came out because I thought, great, all hours can be my full coverage foundation, and I love it so much that when I'm in my lighter foundation months, I will use its little brother. Not to be. This is a non-coverage, heavy feeling. It's everything we don't want in a tinted moisturizer. It does not have good coverage, and it feels heavy and thick on the skin. And this is again a tinted moisturizer that is supposed to have some skincare in it, I believe. It's called the Bare Look Tint. It is everything but. It's just a heavy feeling. And again, some people really, really love this. I just think there are better tinted moisturizers on the market. I think ColourPop's Pretty Skin performed way better than this did. And that was also a Friday face off. And I really love that. I actually use that as a primer sometimes because it's such a good blurring soft look to the skin. And then I'll put a foundation over it. Yes, I'm trying to get down to my, um, you know, days of tinted moisturizers only, but so far it's still, I'm not there yet, but come summer, I'm probably gonna do that with that WTF by Jones Road. This, save your money, I just don't think it's a good purchase. <laughs> okay, now this one, this is one that was really um, baffling to me because when you think of mascara, 
you just think of there's one brand that does mascara very, very well. So if I say good mascara, what's the first brand that pops into your head? If you're like me, it was probably Lancome. I really wanted to like this. This was in a Friday face-off, probably one of my first ones if I remember correctly, because as you guys know, if you've watched my channel for a while, I like to apply two coats of mascara, and then a third and final coat is a waterproof mascara to help hold that mascara in place and not transfer underneath my eyes. And so I'm always looking for a good waterproof mascara. I love the I Love Extreme from Essence, and that's the one that I did in the Friday Face Off up against this one. Now, it definitely performed better. This one did not perform well on a Friday Face Off up against Essence, and it just doesn't perform in normal day life. I'm not sure what it is. It feels like when you go to put it on your lashes, it's, it clumps them together. Now, I am very careful with the first two coats to ensure that my lashes are separated. I don't like them to gather together. I mean, if I'm going for like a doll look, which is hardly ever unless it's Halloween, but there are some times that a makeup look just looks good with a few eyelashes bundled together. That is not my everyday look, but yet that is what I find with this mascara. It just bundles them up. Then the lid is really, the packaging is terrible. The lid is really hard to get it to close again. When you go to pull this out, so right here I'm, that's how stuck it gets. And so then when you go to pull this out, the lid half the time will get stuck and pull out with it. And you end up with so much product on your wand that you have to put it back in and get this part to close back into the lid so that you can then come pull it out again and let it work correctly. I just found this to be way too much effort for a mascara that is north of $35 and the result of it wasn't even worth the frustration of using the product. And this is the defensals that I have recommended to you guys, which is why as soon as I'm like, I'm not in love with that, I've gotta come out and let you guys know so that if you see this and then you watch any old videos, you know that long-term I just didn't love it as much. Now this one's a little bit unfair, but I had to bring it up because I used to love the La Prairie foundation. It has the nice concealer in the top, it's got the beautiful bottle, and it was so pretty. It lasted all day. It was very hydrating. It has caviar in it, but who cares? Cause it's like the last ingredient. So I'm not even sure that it's a benefit, but it just, it looked, your skin looked beautiful. And I had forgotten quite honestly about that foundation. That was like five different foundations ago. And I saw it again recently in a video that Marlena talked about. And I thought, oh gosh, I forgot how much I love that foundation. So let me see if the La Prairie is one that I can fall in love with enough to justify the $200 price tag, which there's really no justifying that. But I wanted to see if I could find a new foundation that I could love. So I went and looked for a color match. Now the color selection is somewhat limited. I thought the color that I used to wear was this winter linen. She put a little bit of sample from the tester in here and said, just see if this is the one. If you were thinking about going back to this, I don't know, this is just like that Chanel The One foundation. The scent on this is so strong that I could not wear it for the duration of the day without triggering a headache. Now, I know that is not everyone's situation and not everyone is as fragrance sensitive as I am, but this has a new scent to it that I know it didn't have several years ago when I wore this foundation before. So I don't understand why these higher end Chanel does it and La Prairie does it, why we have to have a fragrance in our foundation. Like I, if I spend that much on a foundation, I'm not spending it because I want a high powered fragrance in it. In fact, I would spend that to not have a fragrance in it. That's just me. I don't want it to compete with what actual fragrance I put on my body to have a nice scent. I just don't need competing smells around me. So I just, I, I, I'm glad I got the sample and didn't commit to the whole jar again. It is a concealer and a foundation. So you do get two for that price. But still, I'm glad that I sampled it because it just reminded me of why I do not need to do that. While we're talking about foundations that I do not need, I've highlighted this one before, and this is the, and I know I'm gonna get, Jody. that's crazy, that's like one of the best foundations, and that is this Double Wear by Estee Lauder. I've talked about this before. I just dislike everything about it. I dislike that you have to buy a pump separately. I dislike that the pump is, this is what it looks like after I've used it, not very much, because I don't like the way it wears. I dislike the way it wears. I dislike the way it settles into fine lines. I dislike the way it oxidizes on my skin. There is just nothing about this double wear that I can find 
worth liking. And many of you love this and have loved it for years. I've read a lot of comments from people and I highlighted this before that this was just not a foundation that is mature skin friendly. And Estee Lauder is a brand that tends to market itself to catering to more mature women. And I have to give them credit because some of their ads feature more mature women and models and I appreciate that. But I don't find that the products match their marketing models. Does that make sense? At least in my case, it did not. I know I've asked you guys before, for those of you that love it, how do you wear it? Do you have oily skin, dry skin? Do you have to wear it? I mean, it just warms up to me. It just looks more warm um, for me. And then this whole thing is just too much. I'm just not a fan of it. So if you're looking for a foundation that has little to no room for air, there are better ones on the market. The House Labs by Lady Gaga is a very good foundation. That's the one I've been gravitating to. I also like the High Def Foundation by Makeup Forever. The NARS Light Reflecting is also a good foundation. You just don't need very much of it. So while we're talking about foundations, not worth your money, here is one that would have to go on the top of that list. And this is the Tom Ford Traceless Stick Foundation. Coming in at a whopping price tag of $90. This, I don't know what, it, it wears like a concealer. And I, some people like to put concealer on certain just little areas of their face and blend it and be fine with it. That might work for this. That would then make this a $90 concealer. So that alone just takes a moment to process. This, I don't know why they call it a foundation quite frankly, because it is such a thick consistency that is very difficult to blend. The challenge that I had with this, I mean, I even tried to wear it as a concealer thinking I can salvage $90, but it is such a weird formula that it is very difficult to blend. I mean, I can't even blend it on top of that um, Laura Mercier primer. That's how bad that primer is, I'm sorry. This foundation stick, you guys, is just the weirdest, waxiest formula. Maybe if you were to use it to spot treat, it would be okay, but I found that it just was a weird, thick formula to be able to blend at all. So even if you were to try to spot cover with it, I think blending it into skin that does not have anything would be somewhat of a challenge. And if you had on a moisturizer underneath this, I just don't know that it would work. On the Sephora site, it's four stars out of 303 reviews. If you're in this price point for a thicker foundation, that Dior Matte Foundation would probably be a better bet than this. The finish is somewhat similar. That's more of a matte, but it's not a complete dry matte look, um, but it covers as well. It's a more of a full coverage like this one, and I find it much, much easier to blend than this one. Well, we have covered many of the top brands today, but let's talk about MAC. This is MAC's Gel Eye Liner, and it's black. And the only reason I'm gonna highlight this one is because at our age, and I don't wanna speak for everybody, so let me just retract that. At my age, there is no need to have a black gel liner. A, it is very difficult to create a nice winged liner with a gel like this because you've got to get the right brush which you know i've got the right brushes but then you've got to have a very steady hand and let's not even talk about how close or good eyesight you need to have to create a perfectly winged liner when you have a very tiny brush and a gel like this this is probably two years old and that's how much i've used so this isn't so much that it's a product not worth your money it's just one of those products that you want to ask yourself, am I really going to use it? Or would I use a felt tip liner if I'm looking for a liquid liner more? Or in fact, do I have a black eyeshadow in one of my mini eyeshadow palettes that I could just apply a little bit of setting spray and I'd end up with the same consistency and be able to create that same beautiful, long lasting, intensely black eyeliner look? And the answer is probably yes. So again, there's nothing wrong with that product per se. It's just not really one that you would use that often at a more mature age, I think. So that's just my own personal opinion. Let's finish up by talking about the brows. Now brows, I'm all about fast, quick brows. And if there is a brow gel that has color in it that you can just zoom, 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 and you've colored them, you filled them in, and you've set them with one fine product, I am here for it. This is just not that product, and that is the Busy Gal Brows by Tarte. 
Here was the challenge I had with this. I don't even want to put it on because this color. You guys, I went through three different colors and they are all very, very warm. The concept is great. And that is this little tiny, tiny brush. I'm going to go into problem solving mode. So let me back up and explain what I don't like first and then we'll go into solution mode. What I don't like is how small these spikes are on this wand because you have to get the whole wand really close to your skin to be able to cover each hair. And by the time you've done that, you have essentially just covered your skin and I can do that with an eyebrow pencil and that's not the look I'm going for. I just want each hair to be more defined with a darker, more intense color so that I don't have to actually create a brow. I just want to define each hair. So that was the challenge that I had in addition to finding the color match. And then I found that this never really dried down. And that is where I started to get concerned because if you just kind of brush your brow or if you have sunglasses that you take on or off or just reading glasses that you take on and off, I found that this stuff smudged all day. It can never really dried down. So I'm not sure the purpose of it. Well, I understand the concept, but I'm not sure that it was ever fully landed the way it should have. Now, if they're able to get this formula where it can dry down without adding so much alcohol to force it to dry down, if you could get this dried down in black, I think this little brush would be great for lower lashes because your lower lashes aren't as close to your skin as your eyebrows are. So the risk of touching your skin with this brush is less likely with your lower lashes than it is with your brow. So I think that the detail work that you could do with this small brush is pretty impressive if the formula was right and if it, you could get the right color. So there's a couple big ifs there. Until those things happen and the moon and the stars align, I think that this is one that you can definitely pass on. Anastasia of Beverly Hills makes one that I think is way better and Benefit, of course, makes the one that I like to reach for only because the Anastasia one is usually gone when I go to purchase it and that's why I defaulted to the Benefit, but I'm glad I did and I like it. So this was another hard pass for me. So all you guys, that's about $625 that hopefully I have helped you save or at least save yourself back and forth return trips or at least save yourself time in the return lines and purchase other products that you've either wanted to try or you know already work well for you and your skin type. That does it for me today, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, be sure to let me know in the comments and by giving it a thumbs up, and I will see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.